So I've got here a sock, uh, a fingerless mitt and a cowl. So I've got two things of knitting and one thing of crochet. Um, but the generally, the theory is very much the same. So you get your tapestry needle and I'm assuming everybody probably has quite a range of these come in all different shapes and sizes. And basically you just want something with a big enough eye that you can fit your yarn through it. So I'm probably going to go with that one because actually I, the, the crochet one is Aran weight. So I'll put these all back in here a minute. So for the most part, what you will be wanting to do is to do the do the sewing up on the inside. This isn't always the case. If you have got if you've got some you're folding over like that, then actually the the wrong side becomes the right side. So you've got to think about what's not going to be seen because although we try to make this as invisible as possible it's always nice to know that it's not in direct view as well so thread your thread your needle she says yeah my fluff's not wanting to behave don't you? So when I said about making your uh, making your project lay the way you wanted, so I usually, if I'm working in the round, I will do two rows flat first, and that but that does mean that you then need to close this gap. So that's you're just going to loop through the stitch and pull tightly and then loop through on the other side as well and just make sure that gap is closed. Now, it doesn't actually take an awful lot for that to stay put. So if you can see down here, I've got a row of ribbing. And so what you can do, and what I usually do is just slide my needle through each of these knit stitches going down. Depending on how slippy your yarn is, you may want to do a few more of these, but that is more than enough on this yarn. And then just snip in as close to your project as you can. And that should be pretty much invisible. Um, with crochet, it's very similar. So I've got my, got my cowl here. Um, that is my outside. So this is my inside. And again, I want to close up that gap. So through the stitch, pull it tight, through the loop of the stitch on, the, on that side, and pull it tight. And you're just getting those to hold together. Because this is a slightly springier project, I'm going to do one more over this way. And then exactly the same as we did on the knitting, these raised stitches. I'm just going to work my way down and just zigzag through them as that will be invisible. There we go. 
and again snip in as close as you can and then you won't be able to see the end so that's all well and good when you've got um bumps that you can work with but what do you do when you've got stocking stitch so i apologize for that but this one is slightly dog hairy um my yes my taffy dog found my project that were waiting to be sewn up and decided that she was going to have a play with them or at least cuddle them so again you need to turn it the wrong way out so i've got the end of my sock here so i'm just going to thread that onto the needle and look for where that wants to go so you don't really want you see it sort of it gets a little bit blobby where you've finished and cast off so you kind of want to pull that in i'm just th i'm just threading it through the sock there we go turn it the right way turn it the wrong way out A bit of fluff there. So here we've got sort of reverse stocking stitch. So what you do, exactly the same idea that we did when we had the the ribbing, but you're just going to go through some of these little lumpy bumpy bits. And you don't need to pull tight. You're just going to thread up and down through them. And just, just pick a few. Try and do ones next to each other. And again, you should find that that is pretty invisible and it shouldn't be creating a big um, difference in the feel of the sock either. Um, so when you feel like you've done enough, snip as close as you can. And if I turn that back the right way out, you can't see where that was. 